Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen, everybody. Amen. Amen. We want to welcome each and every one of you to uh, for joining, amen, New Deliverance Bible Church, amen, our Sunday morning worship services. Praise God. Amen. Um, my, I am Prophet Yolanda Banks, Prophetess Yolanda Banks, that is, and this is Prophet Banks. Amen. amen. We are the pastors of New Deliverance Bible Church, where we are rooted in Christ, growing in faith, and effecting change through grace. Amen. amen. Praise God. And again, we want to welcome you, those who are tuning in via Zoom and those who are joining us Facebook Live. Praise Amen. God. We bless God and thank God for you this morning. We're going to begin by opening up with our, our morning scripture. Amen. Our glory scripture this morning. Amen. And we're going to turn to um, St. John, the Gospel of St. John, chapter 3. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. I hope you have your swords today, your swords, your Bibles. Amen. Praise God. We're going to turn to St. John chapter 3. Amen. And we're going to start at verse 11. Praise God. Amen. Uh, befitting the day um, the world is celebrating Valentine's Day. Amen. But we want to celebrate the one who loved us. Amen. First. Amen. Amen. So verse 11 reads, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do, excuse me, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. Verse 12, it says, if I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you heavenly things? Amen. Amen. Verse 13, it says, and no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that had came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. Yes. Verse 14, it says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. All right. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, amen, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah. Verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he had not believed the name of the only begotten Son of God. Verse 19, and this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Verse 20, for everyone that doeth evil hateth hate the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. Verse 21 in our final verse says, but he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be, may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God for that scripture. Amen. We're going to go into prayer. Amen. Father God, we just bless you and thank you on today, Father God. Amen. We thank you for being God, great Jehovah, Father God. We yes, know that Lord. above you there is none other, Father God. Yes, we bless Lord. you, Lord God, for loving us, Lord God, first, Lord God. And yes. you have uh, caused us, Father God, and have, Lord, given us the desires of our heart to love you, Father yes, God. Lord. So we thank you for, Lord, reconciling us with our Father, which is in heaven, who first loved us, Lord God, so that we may have a relationship with God and have a right to the tree of life, Father God, yes, Father. that we may, Lord, rest in eternity, Lord God, with you, Father God. For that, we praise you. For that, we give you thanks, Lord God. For that, we bless your name on this morning, yes, Father Lord. God. Yes, we lift up those, Lord God, who are opening up their, their doors for services on this morning. Yes, and we Lord. don't mean physical doors, Father God. But we mean the opportunity, Lord God, yes, to Lord. go out and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, oh God. Yes, to go out, Lord God, and be a light in the world, Father God, for those, Lord God, who are walking in darkness, Lord, or, or may be hindered by the darkness, Father God. Yes. We thank you that, Lord God, your word is spirit and it is life, Father God, and that it will it will be spirit and life, Father God, for those that hear it on today. Yes, we thank Lord. you that it will bring light to dark places, Father God. It will bring healing. It will bring deliverance, oh God. Yes, it will God. give us clarity of mind 
in a peace of mind, Father God. Yes. We bless you and thank you, Father God, that you know you're causing us, Father God, to mature in the body of Christ and yes. mature in your word. Yes, God. So that Lord God, we reflect the image of you, Father God, and not ourselves. Oh God. Right we God. thank you that you empower us, Father God, to walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh, Father yes, God. Lord. We bless you and thank you for your glory on today. We bless you and thank you for Lord, for your power. We ask, Lord God, that yes, you would God. just anoint the, li the lips of a prophet Banks on uh, today, Father God, yes, that you will empower him to speak a word, Father God, that will, Lord God, sow good seed in the ground, Father yes, God, Lord. in the name of Jesus, Lord. May he speak or say something, Lord God, from you that will draw the hearts of the people back to you, Lord God, that will yes, draw them Lord. closer in their relationship with you, Father God, yes, that will Lord. propel them further in their walk, Lord God, their Christian living walk with you, Father. Yes. So we bless Prophet Banks on this morning, Father. Continue to anoint him, Lord God. Give him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, oh God. Yes, God. Rightly dividing the word of truth to your people, Father God. Yes, we thank you for this opportunity. We don't take it lightly, Father God. Yes, and we thank you for those who are tuning in, Lord God. Open their eyes to see spiritually as you do, Father God, through your spiritual eyes. Open yes, their ears to hear your voice. Oh, God, so that the voice of the stranger, Lord God, the voice of the enemy, they shall and will not follow for the God yes, and open Lord. up their hearts to receive, Lord God, what the spirit of the Lord is saying unto them on today, Father God. Yes, we bless you for all things that you're doing, Father God. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. And amen. 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 We're going to turn it over to Prophet Banks as he's going to bless us today. Amen. With the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We once again, thank you. As Prophet Banks has stated, thank you for via Zoom, amen, and via Facebook, amen. We bless the day. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made, amen. A lot of people celebrating Valentine, but we celebrating Jesus, amen. We celebrating the Holy Spirit. We celebrating God today, amen. Amen. Today, we're going to get to the scripture. Our scripture is coming from Haggai. Haggai, amen. Uh, Haggai, amen. The second chapter, amen. Amen. The second chapter of Haggai. Amen. If you have your Bibles, amen. If, uh, we urge you always to take notes because you might use, uh, you might, you know, sometimes we forget and sometimes we may be going through something and we can look through our notes and we can realize, oh, we talked about this and kind of remind you or refresh your course. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Even in school, they tell you to take notes to be able to take the test. And then when we go through the test of life, yeah. amen, the notes, we can always go back to our notes to help us to take, go through the test that which gives us a testimony. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We thank God. Amen. Haggai, the second chapter, verse one says, in the seventh month, in the one and 20th day of the month came the word of the Lord by the prophet mm -hmm. Haggai saying, speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Jealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the son of Hosedek, amen, the high priest, and to the residue of the people saying, amen, that residue, that residue is something that that's left over, amen, amen, amen. And so who left among you saw the house in her first glory? Yeah. And how do ye see it now? That's a question. Is it not, not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? Verse four, yet now be strong, O, Zuber, o Zuberbel, amen, said the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, amen, for I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts, amen. Verse five says, according to the word that I with you when ye came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. Amen. Verse six says, for thus said the Lord of hosts, yet once it is a little while and I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations and the desire of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse eight, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Verse 9, our final verse said, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. 
saith the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen. We want to use for a topic and amen, overcoming disappointment. Amen. Overcoming disappointment. Amen. Many of us, amen, uh, have lived our lives and we have experienced disappointments, whether it's someone promising us something or there is something did not go the way that we thought and we became disappointed. We caused us to want to give up wanted us, caused us to uh, be uh, in a spirit of depression, caused us to be in despondent or discouraged, amen, to be because things didn't go as well as we thought they should have been. A lot of us said, I want to do this by this age and I want to do this by this time. And some, uh, we even done a vision board and, and then things did not pan out the way that we wanted to and we became amen, disappointed, amen, and then a lot of times we question God, and sometimes we question our faith, sometimes we question uh, why do I even exist because of the disappointment, amen, and amen, but we have to learn as people of God and children of God, amen, we have to, amen, understand that we have to be overcomers, because the God that we serve, he allow us to overcome that which has us in despondent or depression or in our discouraging state, amen? And so over, if you define the word overcoming or overcome, getting better of your situation, mm -hmm. get the, in other words, uh, you get the best of the what is causing you to be disappointed, the causing you whatever situation that you in, you get the best of it and not allow it to get the best of you, amen? Amen. And disappointment, amen, is sadness or displeasure caused by non-fulfillment of one's hope or expect, ex, uh, expectations. Amen. amen. And so if you really put these two words together, you get the best of your situation through your sadness of your displeasure of the non-fulfillment of the expectation of the hope that which you have experienced. Amen. amen. And so we praise God for allowing us to be overcomers. If you serve God, you have to be an overcomer. But you have to realize that Jesus had, had died on the cross for us so that way we can be overcoming because he overcame, overcame death. So if he overcame death and we uh, accept the blood of Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, amen, amen, we can be over overcomers, amen. amen. And so here in Haggai, amen, Haggai is was the Hebrew prophet doing the building of the second temple, amen, in Jerusalem, and one of the 12 minor prophets. And most times when people that don't have the understanding of the major and minor prophets, it's not because they was just lesser than what the, uh, the major prophets, just they didn't have much to say at that particular time. And that's why they call the minor prophets, amen? Amen, and uh, he was a 12 minor prophets in the Hebrew Bible and the author of this book, Haggai, amen. He is known for his prophecy, amen, uh, in 520 BCE, which is uh, before common era, or BC, which before Christ, amen, commanding the Jews to rebuild. He said, notice, commanding uh, uh, the Jews to rebuild the temple, and his name, amen, means uh, my holiday, and he was born in Babylon, amen. Amen. So overcoming, overcoming disappointment. Amen. Amen. Satan is always doing his utmost to stop the work of God. Anytime that you decide to, to do anything for God and you be consistent with it, Satan's, uh, he's on his job 24 seven, tries to stop you and stop uh, the people of God from doing the work of God. When you when you was out in the world and seemed like he never would bother you, seemed like nothing, everything was going as well. But soon as you make a decision uh, of uh, you're going to uh, fight for Christ, you're going to go the direction that God is taking you. Amen. His utmost, Satan's utmost uh, job is to stop the plan the plan of God. Amen. That's his job to cause you disappointment and cause you discouragement. Amen. Amen. So he hindered. So here in this text, amen, Satan was hindering, hindering these Jews. 
amen, from building the temple, amen. And today his endeavors is to hinder the people from spreading the gospel, which is the good news of Jesus Christ, amen. And, uh, and uh, they was building a spiritual temple to uh, to be built for the most high. And if it was by any means, uh, the evil one he was trying to delay the uprising. He and he, because he's 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 on his job. He's never all, and he's twenty four seven. He's on that job to stop the uprising of the things of God. Amen, amen. And uh, if you take if you take this uh, working with faith and courage for the glory of God, you will be sure. Amen. You can do the uprising if you trust in God. I say it all the time, my favorite scripture, if you just trust in the Lord with all your heart and you lean not to your un own understanding. Amen. Amen. So because the devil is very cunning. Amen. And he knows how to change his argument. He knows how to con you in and say the things that you want to hear and say the things that you would love to hear to, to satisfy your emotions. Amen. And then he turned around, he stabbed you in the back. That's how Satan does, because he's trying to keep his own design. He have his own agenda and, and he little cares about the work of God. Amen. So long as he can hurt the cause for God. Amen. Amen. So I am completely convinced, amen, that we can be overcomers today. Amen. Mm -hmm. And Satan's only design is to hurt the cause of God, to do his infernal work. He has many weapons in his arsenal. Amen. He, he, he uses greed. He uses crime. He uses time and anger and malice, false accusations. Amen. And, and still another time he used lust. He evil desires our temptation to revenge, to get revenge on people that have, have wronged us, have done something to us. Amen. Amen. So, but all of his weapons, amen, but none are sharper than causing disappointment or discouragement. Amen. Amen. Because it seems like the many of us, amen, people of God, we have became discouraged, even during this pandemic, even through 2021, amen. We suppose that we, we made these declarations and uh, at the end of 2020 that we was going to do things differently. This is a year of changing gods, but but now we uh, things seem like they're not changing and we are becoming disappointed and discouraged and we want to give up. We feel like we're losing it because, amen, we allow the devil to infiltrate our spiritual man, amen, and he has infiltrated us and he's taken us, amen, off our, our, our focus, what God has for us, amen, amen. I realize that many of us that read struggle with, uh, 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 struggle with disappointment and and discouragement, amen. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm perhaps you know you expected more out of life, and you feel somewhat cheated by some circumstances, amen. It could be that you have been roughly treated by someone who promised to love you and love you forever, amen. Perhaps you have suffered uh, some disappointment from the hands of a family member, amen. But I know this feels. I know sometimes we feel mistreated. Amen. But too, you know, we would feel mistreated from work every day or go be going to and fro. People look over us. And we even those of us that's in ministry seem like people, amen, has looked over, caused us disappointment. Amen. But the Bible says, amen, in Isaiah uh, 54 and 17, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up, you hear, you hear that word, rise up. I mean, anybody that talk against you, talk about you, have stabbed you in the back, have caused a, a plan against you, which is the Satan's plan, amen, rise up against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn, amen, amen, and then James told me uh, 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 that, uh, James 1 said, my brother counted all joy, yeah, yeah, when ye fall into the diver's temptation, that diver's temptation with multi-color in, in, in various trials and various situations, amen. But he said, verse 3, say, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh Work in patience. Amen. We got to have patience in the midst of that which we are going through. Amen. Amen. So we, it, it'll cause less discouragement. It will cause less disappointment because if we just knowing this, 
that it's a trying, it's a test. You cannot have a testimony without a test. Amen. And we hear it all the time. Amen. But but here in the text, back to the text in, in Haggai, the second chapter, amen, they was building uh, in, in their minds, uh, a shanty. A shanty is derived, well, as we know it in today, as a shack. And, and, you know, when we look at a shack, it's small and it don't look appealing to the eye. Amen. It, it doesn't catch your attention. If, if it does catch your attention, oh, that's raggly. I don't want to live in a shack. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and so they was building a shanty on the ruins on the, uh, uh, the Tash Mahal, which is an ivory white marble mausoleum of the south bank of the uh, Yama River in the Indian city of Adria, Adria. Amen. And so our text for us, amen, we can use it as a case study, amen, and it causes and a causes and cure of spiritual disappointment, amen, amen. So we have natural disappointment, but we also have spiritual disappointment, amen. So you will, I'm sure, recall briefly the circumstance that we call in the fourth, uh, this fourth chapter, uh, this little book, amen. After returning from exile in Babylon, the Jews commenced rebuilding this temple, amen, then ceased the work not long thereafter, largely because the opposition from the Samaritans, amen, amen. 16 years later, God had raised up Hagar to call the people back to the task at hand because they had gave up. And, and, and what that's a lot of times when we are doing the work and what God has told us sometimes, amen, we feel discouraged because it's not coming out the way that we thought it should have been. That's why we have to totally depend on God, amen. And, and because they had begun to work in around about, amen, September 520 BC, barely a month had passed, amen, and the essential enthusiasm had won, had won once again, amen. And this time they were overwhelmed by the sheer magnitude of the project and the memories. Now, they, in other words, that word sheer, which means they got discouraged, they got overwhelmed, amen. Sometimes we get overwhelmed in ministry. Sometimes we get overwhelmed in the things that we, that which we are doing, amen, amen. And so by the, so they was comparing, the scripture even said, amen, they was comparing from what, what they was building now and what they once was, amen. Because that residue on their mind, how it used to be. But so they felt like when they was building this shanty, amen, they, uh, this, this smaller uh, 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 temple, amen, they felt like it wasn't good enough. And notice how many times have we have uh, uh, experienced that it felt like whatever we do is not good enough, amen. And it caused us to be disparately, it caused us to be in depression, caused us to be disappointed, amen. And so they didn't feel like, because they realized that they were, anytime you're doing anything for God, amen, God honors that. It doesn't matter what man say, as long as you do it, doing it as unto the Lord. And that's what they had forgot about it. They was doing it as unto the Lord, but they was, they was feeling despondent because their faith was failing, amen, amen, because that because their memory was in that the other uh, old temple it was etched in their mind how it used to look, and so they didn't feel like they was doing their best, amen, amen, amen. and so by comparison their efforts seemed embarrassingly small, amen. But God does bless small beginnings, amen, yes, amen. Why, uh, uh, why bother to rebuild? They were saying to themselves, why bother? to rebuild when you ended up building a shack in ruins and uh, any, anything could come by and blow it over. Amen. Amen. Such a small building could only call attention to the past, uh, man, all its glories. Amen. Amen. So Haggai now is speaking, amen, uh, to the discouraged workers. Amen. Now, they said, now this is the causes if you're taking notes, amen, uh, the first point is the causes of disappointment, amen, amen. And so our text suggests that several reasons for their discouragement, but most of it was resolved about the problem of a bad memory. It's, it's amazing how we can go through things, we can remember the bad things 
uh, we remember more of the bad things that has been etched in our minds than the good things. Amen. Because it seems like uh, we cannot, sometimes we can't get past what happened on yesterday. Amen. Amen. So they were guilty both of dwelling upon the negative and forgetting the positive altogether. And that's why we always say now we are mature, amen. As we mature pastors, amen, we tell people that you, anything that happened negative in your life is to help someone else. And anything that happened that's not uh, not pleasing to the eyes and not pleasing to your natural man, amen, use it as a learning experience to help somebody else and turn that negative into a positive, amen. And so that's what Hagar was doing, he was letting them know to take a negative memory and turn it into a positive. Amen. Because they was holding on to the past. Amen. For these Jews had become so heavy burdened Amen. Hinder, because when you come heavy burden, it hinders your progress. It, when you start to think about the past, the negative past yesterday, it stops the progress today for your progress to go on on tomorrow. Amen. And so a good, another point, and then my next point, a good memory of wrong things. Amen. A who of you is left saw this house in a form of glory. It talks about that, amen, in the text, amen. Amen. Uh, it says, because the temple was destroyed in 586 B.C. before Christ, amen. Right. Amen. Hagar prophesied, now watch this, amen, in 520 B.C., 66 years later, amen. It is not impossible that Hagar himself Amen. Was a young boy doing this time when the uh, the temple was destroyed. Amen. Certainly, there have must have been many people that was approximately over seventy five years old to remember the splendor of the Solomon's temple, temple, and mourn what it was, what they had lost. Amen. Because you know we always mourn what we have lost, but still are thanking God for what He's blessing us with. Anytime you lose something, God always turn around and give you something better than what you already have. He replaced is something better than what you already had. Say amen, somebody. Amen. amen. And so it is hardly, uh, when, when, when they spoke, they recalled the glory, amen, of the old days. And you know how we, we sit around, we talk, amen. We talk about the good old days, amen. We, even, even when I was in college, I talk about the times when I was in the band and, and how, amen, I talk about the good old days that what I considered as the good old days. But you know what? Now that we are living our best life because we're living a godly life, amen, amen, amen. So so uh, where, uh, where there was gold and silver, had marked Solomon's temple, amen. It is almost embarrassed to them to see a shabby structure uh, building this shack and uh, once the old temple they had seen, amen. Amen, so they was perhaps, they would just, it just would work their effort because they couldn't match up what they already, what was already was there. So notice in verse five, amen. Say, according to the word that I covenant with you, when ye came out of Egypt, that was God was talking about his people. God, yeah, come out of abundance. God had a special a relationship with his people, the Israelites, amen. Israel, amen. And so what happened was he made a covenant with them, amen. And so he said, when you came out of Egypt, he said, so my spirit, amen, remaineth among you, fear ye not. Now it wasn't. Now it didn't talk about in the like the New Testament talks about the Holy Spirit. But God said, "My Spirit remaineth with you." So you got to realize that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. And the most important thing. This is a sidebar. The most important word. One of the most important words of the Bible is the is the word "in." I in, which means that He's in us, and we allow Him to come in. Amen. Amen. So his spirit remained, he said, remaineth in, in us. And he said, fear not. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So he said, this I will, I covenant with you when I, when you came out of Egypt, out of bondage, out of slavery. Amen. So the Jews hadn't forgotten 
that God, what God had done for them at the Red Sea, they, they forgot the amazing miracle, amen. It was like a distant memory, amen. You know how sometimes we go through something, we forget that God already had brought us to, out of it before, amen. Amen. They had forgotten uh, how they were trapped with the Egyptian uh, army behind them at the Red Sea, and, and, and Moses had, uh, had struck the water, and and the sea departed, and they walked through the on to dry land. Amen. Amen. We know the story. Amen. When the Egyptian followed them, the seas came back together in unison. They swallowed uh, Pharaoh's entire army. They forgot about this. Amen. But we forget about the miracles of God. Amen. Because the same God today it was, uh, it was the yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. Because He's still working miracles today. Now we might not see seas opening up, but He's still performing miracles. He's still delivering. He's still saving folk. Amen. He's still bringing folk out of coma, uh, comas. Amen. He's still amen, rising people out of, uh, that died and coming back to life. He's still doing it. Now, because uh, you have to, amen, if you don't believe in miracles, amen, you need to recheck your relationship with God. Amen. It's a miracle, amen, that we wake up every day. Amen. He's still performing miracles. Amen. Amen. And so look at verse five. He said, my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This of uh, the implication of this statement, Abraham is gone. Uh, Moses is gone. David is gone. Solomon is gone. But the Holy Spirit is still here. Amen. When everybody walk off and leave you, God, the Holy Spirit is with us. Amen. If you're not, be strong. Pick up your hammer. He, and so so uh, uh, Hagar was telling the workers. Yeah, keep the work going. He said, fear not. Be strong. Yeah. yeah, so he was encouraging them. Amen. He said, uh, pick up your hammer and your chisel. Keep on working. Amen. Don't look back to the past. Amen. Now, he was encouraging them to the plot. See, it's a difference in a prophecy. He wasn't prophesying to it. He was encouraging them. Amen. And so he said, don't worry about who isn't here. So we got to stop worrying about, amen, who ain't here, who ain't logging in to our services, amen, or who are not supporting, who's not encouraging us, amen. We got to put our hands to the plow, amen. We got to stop worrying about what somebody else is not doing and concentrate on the relationship that we have with God, amen, and focus on who is here, the Holy Spirit of God, amen. He abides with his people well, forever. He said, I never leave you, nor forsake you. Say amen, somebody. And so John 15 and 7 says, uh, if you abide in me, that a word in again, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done. What? Unto you. Not into you, but unto you, which means over and over and over infinity. Amen. Even into eternity. Amen. And so, therefore, be encouraged. Keep moving forward. Don't be afraid tackling the impossible projects. Amen. Don't be intimidated by uh, uh, circumstances. Amen. God has promised to stay with us forever. And so, this is what Haggai was telling the workers who was building the new temple. Amen. To stay with it. Pick up your hammer. Keep going. Keep moving. Yeah. Because the spirit of God is with you. Amen. Because we can make progress because we got to realize that the spirit of God is in us. Amen. God has promised to stay with us forever. His spirit is the fulfillment. Is that is an unbreakable promise. Amen. And we must keep on keeping on. As the, uh, the old saints used to say, for the spirit remains with us. Amen. And so plan. So so look at this. Next point. They was playing the comparison game. You know how we do. Amen. Uh, does it seem to you as nothing? Amen. To them, it what they was building was nothing because they lost the focus who they was building it for. Amen. Amen. Uh, the, the old people remember the glory of the ancient temple and wept. That what they saw in, in, in uh, a puny temple, amen, to them it seemed to represent all the failure of the past, amen. It was living a symbol of what they had lost 66 years prior to this building of the new temple, amen. Uh, they felt it wasn't even worth the effort to rebuild it because it would never be like of the old days, amen. The same thing happens to us. 
whenever we play the comparison game, amen, we compare our children, our wives, our husbands, we compare, amen, uh, what we used to to do and what we used to have, what we used to drive and how we used to act, amen. And how, uh, you know, you know how we say, it, you know, if, if that was me back in the day, I would have did such and such and such, amen, amen. We compare things, amen. We remember the past as better than it really was, amen. Mm-hmm. Amen, I'm glad at 46, I'm not doing the same thing I was doing at 21, amen. Mm-hmm. At 26, amen, amen, because I'm more focused on the things of God, amen. Amen. Because of maturity. Amen. Somebody say to yourself, maturity. Amen. Amen. The comparison game is foolish and it's dangerous. And that's the reason why we was talking about it just this morning. We look, it seemed like people, uh, it seemed like people want to get rich by doing stupid things and doing dumb things and, and put glue on their hair and glue on their eyes, you know, all these, yeah, I ain't scared to say it, amen, amen. You know, you're doing stupid stuff, amen. Yeah, we then you got other people trying to do the same thing because they see she got paid, now they're gonna try to get paid by doing the same thing. Amen. It's dangerous. It's foolish. Amen. Because only God can make the proper comparison. Amen. I am reminded of the strange and touching story about Peter and Jesus uh, uh, conversing in John 21. Amen. Uh, Three times Jesus asked, do you love me? Amen. Three times Peter answered yes. And three times Jesus told him to feed the flock of God, some of the people of God. And that's what we are doing. Amen. We're feeding the flock. Amen. Amen. He said, he said, what about him? Uh, so, so he did, then Peter saw John following them and asked, what about him? Meaning what does he fit in the plans? See, we so concerned about what everybody else doing. We, we try to compare ourselves to somebody else. Amen. To, to which Jesus replied, if I want him to remain alive until I return. What is it to you, John 21 and 22? God isn't obligated to treat us in exactly the same way he treats anyone else. Everybody has their own destiny. Everybody has their own assignments. Everybody has their own things that God has given to them, their own plans and purpose and destiny that God has given to each and every one of us. That's what makes us so different because everybody would be doing the same thing. This world will be boring. Amen. Because there's every there's many uh, things that God needs each and every one of us to do. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. So that's why he called it the body of Christ. Each function of the body has a different uh, assignment. The hands, the head, the eyes, the ears. Amen. Uh, the, the mouth, the legs. Amen. The feet the of the body. We all, instead of us coming together as one body, we all separated because we, we're supposed to be coming together because each function we just we should be helping each other but we don't amen the act is like we always we all but we will pray that prayer thank god for the activity of our limbs that's the natural sense but in the spiritual sense it's the same thing yeah cutting off the legs and cutting the head off yeah yeah so 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 god isn't obligated to treat us all exactly the same, amen, because God is God, and we are not. He has the absolute right to do whatever he pleases. If you think about the fact he renders all comparison useless and counterproductive, amen, mm-hmm. amen. Living in the past, downgrading the present, and forgetting, amen, the future, amen. amen. The, this is the inevitable uh, result, amen. Because you live in the past, you look down on the present, you forget about God promises for the future. Amen. Amen. So in this case, it's missing God's promise. We miss God's promise because we're so concerned about yesterday. Amen. Because yesterday is gone. Let's improve today for tomorrow. Amen. And so God's promise to bring even greater glory to the rebuilt temple it ever had Doing, doing Solomon days, amen. Verse nine, it says, the glory of this latter house mm-hmm. shall be greater than uh, of the former. Mm-hmm. Woo, that's something right there. It said, who said it? The Lord. 
And notice the Lord is written in capital, amen, of hosts. And in the place I will give peace, said the Lord of hosts, amen, mm -hmm. amen. And so, so spiritual disappointment drains our energy. You know, you know how we, it, it, it drains us so much, it, our countenance change. Yeah. We don't want to do nothing. Yeah. We used to be in the front doing everything. We should be, we used to be armor bears. We used to be, you know, there, you know, praising God. Now we're discouraged. We, uh, we disappointed. Now we sit in the back. Yeah. We tip in late. Amen. Amen. Spiritual disappointment drains our energy because we focus toward the past instead of moving confidently into the future. Amen. So we talked about the cause, amen, of disappointment. Now let's talk about the cure. Now we gave you, we gave you some background, drag drop, some background, amen. We gave you the cause. Now let's give a solution, amen. Right. Amen. The cure for disappointment. I would text suggest four specific steps. Amen. We must take to free ourselves from a swamp of self-pity. Amen. And, uh, and, and despondency, amen. So the first step is the hardest, most basic in some ways, uh, let's go, amen. Let's do it, amen. How often this lesson come up in spiritual life, we must never grow until we learn how to let go. Let go, that's the first, that's the first cure. We got to let the past go. We got, the, we got to, now, we use the word grave. I told you what the word grave meant in the in the Greek on Wednesday night, but now I'm talking about the, what the grave mean now uh, in, in 2021. Grave, hey amen, we bear, we have a grave in the back of our mind because of what's the past. It keeps coming up. Yeah, yeah it keeps resurrecting in our mind. Yeah. Every time something that looked like it, we got to let it go. Let it stay where it is. Amen. Uh, ask God to allow you to let it go. Amen. 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 Until, uh, uh, um, in this case, the Jews had to let it go. They fond memories of Solomon's temple. They had to, in order to move forward to build the, the temple that God had blessed them to do, they had to let go of what they saw 60 years, 66 years prior to them building the new temple. Amen. Mm -hmm. You got to let it go. Until they did that, they would never make any spiritual progress. We wouldn't, as people of God, as the body of Christ, we would never go forward until we forget about those negative things. Let it go. Amen. Let it go. Uh, it, it means choosing to forgive. That's the next one. Forgive. Even though the other person won't admit what they done to you, whatever they done to you, whether it's a family member, a friend, or whoever, your uh, a constituent, amen, who or whatever, you have to forgive them because the mature thing is they don't, they might not be as where you are maturity. So the mature thing to do, as you know better in Christ, you have to forgive them, not for uh, not for them, but for you, your relationship and your progress for God. Amen. Yeah, you have to forgive. Yeah, it take much praying, much fasting. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it often means that deliberately choosing to let go of some dreams, you have to forgive. Amen. No matter what it is, what is good about it, if it's holding you back, you got to let it go. Amen. Amen. Do not. The next point is do not stop working. Don't stop working. Because it does not compare to something that was in your past. So don't stop working. Amen. This is one of the problems of God's people. We always looking back to the past mm -hmm. and we always stuck in the past. Yeah. You know, we have we say it all the time. That so so so, -so, -so, -so person is stuck in the past. They living in the past. You know some people that are living in the past, how they dress, how they talk. Amen. Hey, we still talk about something that uh, I can't believe it. And right there in this day and time, people still talking about, I don't want women in my pulpit. I can't believe that you have not studied the word of God. Amen. Amen. We still live in Back in the 80s and the 70s and the 60s. Amen. Amen. I thank God for my wife. Amen. She's going to be in the pulpit. Amen. Amen. Thank God for it. Amen. Amen. So uh, uh, don't stop working. Amen. We're always looking back 
to the past. But the great lesson that God wants us to impress upon us is that God always does a new and different work. Amen. The word never changed, but sometimes he have different avenues, different vehicles, amen, to, to reach the people. Amen. Amen. Now, just think, we're going through this pandemic if we didn't have this social media, if we didn't have Zoom, we didn't have Facebook Live, how would we get the message out? We'd have to do like old school, have to go out and walk and, and set up a, t a tent revival. Amen. Amen. And so, so God is always doing new things, amen, to reach his people, amen. And we don't need to hang on to these old traditions, amen. And, and God is saying, keep on working, amen. I am with you, and I'm, 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 I'm in your midst. You don't need to worry about how it's going to turn out, amen. It may be different, but it will always be better. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, things might look different in the natural, but it's going to be better in the spiritual realm. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These discouraged, discouraged carpenters, amen. As hard as it was, they had to let it go. Amen. Uh, until uh, you do, you can't never move forward in God. And my fourth point is you got to look up. You got, anytime you see the word behold in the Bible, most of the time you see behold and there's a comma, which means to look up, amen. So in other words, he's saying, behold, look up, amen. To yeah, to Jesus, amen. And to look up means to get a new view of who God is, amen. And, and so we are continuing to learn about God. I don't care how much you read the Bible. I don't care how much school you done went to. I don't care how much you done uh, dissect the word. I don't care how many times you done read that same scripture. We always learning new things about God. Amen. Every day there's new revelation. Amen. Amen. That's why we got to stop arguing uh, with the word. I know apologetics, you know, I know there is a course for that. Amen. But we got to stop. Sometimes we argue the word. That's just a different revelation, a different new way of looking at it. Amen. Not twisting it, but looking at the different revelation. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because now look, it says the new view of who God is. Did you notice that Haggai used particular name of God six times in these nine verses? Amen. Amen. His name translated the, the Lord Almighty. If you look closely at the text, now we're going to go to seminary right now. Uh, if you look closely at the text, you will discover the word Lord is written in capital letters. Mm -hmm. It is capitalized because it refers to the Hebrew word Yahweh, yeah. which is God's personal name. Amen. You know how we re we fill out something that says your personal name, and then ask you your business name, but God's personal name is Yahweh. Amen. Amen. The word Almighty translates the word Sabbat, which means the armies of earth mm. and heaven. Amen. Ain't that something? The King James translated as the Lord of hosts, meaning he who is sovereign all over all the powers of the earth and heaven. It is extremely a strong name of God. So that's why when you get in trouble, just call on the name of God. Yeah. Call on the name of Jesus. Just call on Yahweh because he will fight your battle. Amen. Amen. Yeah, because you can might even call it military amen the name because it means that he is god who is greater than all forces so there's nothing can happen to you unless god allow it to happen because he can fight your battle amen no one can stand against him no one can defeat his purposes no one can hinder amen him the least amen when the lord almighty goes out to battle on your behalf amen you are going to win because he's never lost a battle yet amen yeah because the, i heard the, i heard the, the songwriter said walter hawk said when the battle don't say when the battle is over yeah yeah don't wait to shout yeah you can shout before the battle is over amen yeah, you can you can yeah, yeah, you can come against me, the sword and spear and javelin. So this is David. So so David said, you now you remember when David uh, uh, was in the valley of Eli, and he was facing the mighty giant Goliath. What name of God do you think he used? You came against me with 
the spear and, and the javelin, but I but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty. Because he knew he was going to fight his battle. Amen. The God of the armies of Israel, who you have defiled. Amen. And then today I will give you uh, uh, the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth and to the whole world uh, will know that there is a God in Israel. Mm -hmm. Amen. And uh, first Samuel, uh, first Samuel 17, 40, uh, 5 to 47, all those gathered here would know that there is not by a sword or spear that the Lord saves for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you all of into your hands. Amen. When God is big in your life, the task before you is small. Yeah. In other words, whatever you go on, whatever God tells you to do, he's not going to give you no more you can bear humanly amen because he's going to give you the necessities he's going to give you the plan he's going to give you the uh the uh the instructions amen amen and so the jews of haggai's day had a small god at the task of rebuilding the temple because it seemed overwhelming to them anytime and we seems overwhelming to us amen we our god is not big in our lives amen right. amen amen and just like when satan try to cut, throw his devices and try to throw his weapons against us the bible says in ephesians amen the sixth chapter it says uh be he said finally my brother be strong in the law and and, and in the power of his might yeah, 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 and, and here's my amen. And then verse 11 says, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna pick out some words of the verse. It says, uh, put on the whole arm of God, amen. Verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against what flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of the world, against spiritual weakness and wickedness in high places. Then he said, Well, wherefore, well, take unto the whole armor of God. Amen. He says, uh, 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 we stand the evil day and haven't done all to stand. He said, uh, uh, gird your lions. Your lions, that's a belt. That's for parry. The, they, they, the armies will hold the, the pants up with the belt. Amen. And so preparing for battle. Amen. Uh, breath, breastplate of righteousness is to protect your heart. Amen. And he said the, uh, uh, the gospel should of peace, which means they used to have a, a three or four inch spike. They was put it in the ground so when the army come against it, it will help them to stand still. So we got to stand firm on the word of God. Amen. And then it said the helmet of, of salvation is to protect your head. Amen. Amen. So, so a lot of people try to give you their head knots, try to twist the world. You got to protect it. You got to protect what goes into your minds. Amen. So we got to look ahead. Amen. I, I, I said, you know, on Wednesday, we was talking about, uh, talking about the healthy church, that the word of God will change your perspective, amen, will change your direction, amen. And so we, in verses six through nine, it changes direction. So verses one through three talked about the discouragement, amen, of the workers. Four and five talked, uh, Haggai was encouraging them. Six to nine. Now Haggai was given a prophecy. Amen. Mm -hmm. He was he was given the promises, and now it was a time of uh, uh, he was telling them it's going to be a, a time of international shaking to come upon the world. And so he was telling them what they was doing. It was just not for at that particular time, but it was for the future. Amen. And so God, all the word of God it tells us what's going to happen eternally. Amen. And so um, it's interesting in, 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 in Hebrews, the 12th chapter, 26 to 27, quotes Haggai 2 and 6. And it applies to the second coming of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he had promised, saying, yet once I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Now look at verse 6. 
It says, for thus said the Lord of hosts, yet once is a little while for I shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and what? Dry land. Amen. At that time, the voice shook the earth, but now uh, has he has a promise. Amen. Once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. Amen. The words once more indicate Amen. The removing of what can be shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken will we remain. Or well, ain't that something? So he was trying to get them to say, whatever you build in the name of the Lord, it will remain if you build it in the name of the Lord. So if whatever that be shaken is going to be shook. But whatever we remain, which is the word of God, and our spirit, the spirit remains in us. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. So the meaning of this is he shook the earth. He gave Moses the law. Hagar said, a day is coming when he's going to shake the earth again. But the next time he will shake the heavens as well. The day is coming when all the world will be shaken by God as a shaking is greater than an earthquake. We don't have many earth. I don't think we ever had an earthquake here. I don't remember. Not in my time, I don't believe. But in California, they always have an earthquake. But this earthquake that's coming is going to be more than, than, than a little earthquake. This is going to be a shaking because God is coming back. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so the Bible, amen, is telling us, but hey, guys, talking about the earthquake greater than anything a scientist, amen, can talk about, amen. When this comes, the whole earth will be shaken apart and everything in with men will be put trust and will be gone, amen. The other thing we put all, that's why we can't put our trust in everything here on earth because it's temporary. We got to focus on the things of God that which we're going to live eternally. That's what he was trying to tell, prophesy to these Jews. Amen. Amen. Because they was concerned about the now and the past, but we got to be concerned about tomorrow. Amen. Amen. And so, amen. Therefore, amen. Uh, don't put your hopes in the world system. Mm -hmm. It's going to go down for good. Amen. Uh, it, it, it can't last. It's going to be crumble and fall. Amen. The whole world and anything that's in it. And if you live your life for this world, in that day, everything you live for will be dust. Amen. It's going to be burned up. Amen. Therefore, you have if you have money, amen, invest it for God. Amen. If you have some food, share it with the poor. If you have some clothes, give it to one that need it. If you have some water, give it to the thirsty. If you have some time on your hands, spend time with the hurting. Talk to them, counsel with them, give them the word of God. Give them some life applications because everything you went through is to help somebody else. Don't miss the opportunity, amen, to witness to somebody, amen? Amen, if you have some good news, give it to the lost. Let them know that everything is gonna be all right. God is saying something important to us. And he has given us an unshaken kingdom. It's ours. It's guaranteed. Amen. Therefore, we can afford to share things of the world. It, it, it can't last much longer if we continue, amen, to focus on the world system. Amen. Amen. So I end with this. The glory of the latter house mm -hmm. shall be greater than the former, said the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give you peace, said the Lord of hosts. In other words, we can overcome disappointment if we start worrying about the former things. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. We we gotta get it, we gotta get moving. We gotta stop worrying about what disappoint us. We gotta overcome disappointment. We got to get up and get moving for God. Amen. Too many of us are sitting around, amen, talking about uh 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 uh, uh, it's me. Whoa, it's me. Amen. We got to be strong. We got to rise up. Amen. We got to get moving. We don't let anything stop us from doing. Be strong in the work of God. Don't let Satan deter us. Don't let negative people come in and deter us yes. because we got to do the, the work of the Lord. Amen. It's time out for playing. It's time out for uh, trying to do, we, we so focus on us. We need to be focused on the work of God. Amen. Yield to the spirit. Amen. Open our hearts, open our minds, open our ears to the word of God. Amen. And so uh, the Bible says, amen, may great 
God may grant us, uh, if we believe in Jesus, amen, give us everlasting peace and hope through his spirit who remains us, through us, and in us. Amen? Amen. 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 We thank God for the lesson today. We thank God for teaching us how to overcome disappointment. We thank you for the prophecy of Haggai to let us know that uh, if we do it in Jesus Christ, if we do it in God, amen, it's, God don't look upon it as small. Man might look at it as small, but God look at it as a big thing because you're doing it as unto the Lord. Amen. 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 That, that might be someone today that coming that may uh, have been separated from God or, don't, or lost or don't know God. And we often, amen, offer Christ. Amen. We, we, we would love for you to be a member of our church, but the main thing is being saved and being delivered and being healed. Uh, Romans 9, uh, 10, 9 and 10, it says, Thou that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Verse 10 says, For with the heart man believe it unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you're ready to be saved today, just repeat this simple prayer after me. And this and today you will be saved. We say, Dear Lord Jesus, yes. Yes. I need you. I know I am a sinner right now. I turn from my sins and open the door of my heart and life. I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. Take control of my life. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. Lord, I thank you for saving me today on February the 14th, 2021. May God bless you. Amen. We're going to turn it over to Prophetess Banks at this time. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. We just thank God for that word on today. A powerful word. Amen. Encouragement. Amen. Overcoming. Amen. Disappointments of life. And uh, to sum it up, our focus should be on things that are eternal. Amen. Praise God instead of things that are earthly or temporary. Amen. And as you were uh, mentioning that word to us, the one thing that I could think about uh, when you kept saying that the uh, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former, the the reason for that, if we look at it, is because we're uh, we're all houses. That's right. We're all our all of us, our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So God doesn't just have one temple anymore. He has several uh, temples. I mean, several uh, souls that are turning their lives over to him. So the glory, amen, that manifests in each of us, amen, shall be uh, greater than the glory of the first temple that was ever built. Amen. amen. And so we just have to keep our focus, amen, on God. Um, and as you were speaking, I was looking back here at my bookshelf and I was thinking, you know, one day, amen, one day uh, those books are going to be owned by somebody else mm -hmm. or they're going to be thrown away. Uh, the furniture, we won't have it anymore. Amen. When we go home to glory and see the Lord, amen. All of this stuff that we see, all of the stuff that we have, all of the stuff that we uh, possess, it will not last, but it's only what we do for Christ, amen, that Real lasts, nice. amen. So it is important for us to uh, spiritually mature in the things of God and not only um, uh, uh, you know, spiritually mature ourselves, but to teach others how to be spiritually mature. 
and how to grow closer to God. So I thank you for that word on today. It really Amen. encouraged me. Amen. Just brought some things to my mind. Amen. It, that helps you to go further. Amen. In your relationship with God. Amen. 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 So again, we thank those that were tuning in on today with us via Zoom. We had quite uh, a lot of people in on, on Zoom today and Facebook Live. Uh, we bless and thank you for um, uh your diligence and supporting us, amen, and the ministry, amen. Um, we want to invite you to our services, which again, on Sunday starts at 11 a.m., and then we have our Wisdom Wednesday Bible study, amen, that be, uh, starts at 7 o'clock p.m. now, amen. amen. Um, we have an upcoming event for our women's ministry, amen. Women of Wisdom Empowerment Ministries is hosting an empowerment meeting this Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m., and we're going to have a special guest speaker, Apostle Lachlan Bryant, amen, of Greater Works Outreach Ministries, amen, and amen. we're going to be talking about, amen the power of prevailing prayers during a pandemic amen? amen and not only is she a prayer warrior a, a dynamic uh, uh you know preacher and teacher of the word of god she also has amen a testimony herself of how during this pandemic the power of prayer amen amen uh availed much availed availed much for her i should say amen yeah. so you don't want to miss it you want to be a a part of that amen we host our uh empowerment meetings once a month amen and next month it, i'm going to be speaking amen and so amen. i'll be uh, uh pushing out the information for that empowerment meeting shortly after this one that's coming up on thursday um and besides that our uh, meetings if you um would like to support and give to the ministry amen um you can do so by sending cash app to um a uh, dollar sign New D 2012. Amen. amen. Again, that's dollar sign New D 2012. Amen. 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 Any final words before we close? That's it. Amen. Well, we thank you again for uh, your attendance. We're just going to pray a prayer, brief prayer. Father God, we bless you and thank you for the word on today. We pray that those that heard the word were excited with joy, Father God, and that, Lord God, they understand and they know, Father God, that you're speaking to their hearts and minds on today about how to overcome disappointments, oh God, how, Lord God, to forgive, how to let go, Father God, how to release things into your care, Father, that they understand, Father God, that they, Lord, play for an audience of one and the only opinion that matters is yes, your God. opinion, oh God. Thank you, Father God, that you help them, Lord God, to lean and depend on the help of the Holy Spirit in all things, Lord God, and not depend on man for anything, Father God. We just bless you and thank you, Father God, for uh, progress in each yes, and every God. one of our lives that we're not stagnant, we're not procrastinating, Father God, but we're moving forward in the things that you have called and predestined us to do, Father God. Yes, God. We, Father, we want you to be uh, not so much impressed, but Father God, uh, we want you to be happy and smiling with the work that we are doing and producing every day. So give us a heart, Lord, to please you, Father God. Give us a heart, yes, Lord God, God, to seek you first in all things, Father God. And we know that, Lord, once we put you first, Father God, you're going to add all the things that we need to our daily lives to us without question, without yes, asking, God. Father God. We bless you and thank you for being the King of King and the Lord of Lords, Father God. Bless those who tuned in on today, Lord. There yes, may be God. one who is sick. There may be one who is weary, oh God. There may be one, Lord God, who is not sure of their faith, oh God, but we thank you and bless you for what you're doing in their lives. Thank you for renewing their mindsets, oh God. Yes, God. Thank you for helping them to get over their past, oh God. Yes, we thank God. you, Father God, that you're doing a new thing, Father God, in their lives, and yes, it shall God. spring forth now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Yes, God. This and many things we ask in your donor son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much again for tuning in today. And until next time, we love you and have a blessed day. Have a blessed day. Amen. Goodbye.